Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we'll be going through a quick process of setting up OBS so that we can connect it to Twitch and test our streaming. So in OBS, we're going to go up to the Tools menu and use the Auto Configuration Wizard. If you boot OBS for the first time, it will also pop up with this before you get started in setting up your scene. So we'll use this in order to connect with Twitch and to test what our streaming capabilities are so that we have good settings for our stream to Twitch. So let's use the auto configuration wizard. You can see optimize for streaming is default recording as secondary since we're going to be doing Twitch streaming. That's what we want. Let's hit next. So the base canvas resolution setting that pops up here is what is going to fit in this black box inside of OBS. That's not necessarily the resolution that people are going to see when you preview the stream, but it's the resolution that's feeding into OBS. So later there'll be a setting called scaled resolution, which is what people will actually see. It might match up the same, or it could shrink it down to something like 12,080 pixels by 720 down from the 1,920 by 1,080 of your base canvas resolution. So you can just set this up to whatever you're comfortable with. Generally, that would be the resolution of the desktop that you are going to be streaming where you have the game. And then for FPS here, I like to change it to prefer high resolution. So if your streaming upload speed isn't good enough and the auto configuration wizard will basically figure that out for us, do you want to prioritize resolution compared to having 60 frames per second? I would say high resolution with 30 frames per second is better. That's just me. So you can choose whichever you want and then we'll hit next. So then we have to connect it to the service Twitch. So then obviously we need to connect it to Twitch so that we can test our stream. So you can either go to the Twitch dashboard and copy paste your stream key, or you can just connect into Twitch by logging in, going through your two-factor authentication if you have that set up. And that's probably the easy way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right now. So here is where you'll log into Twitch, username and password. So when you've logged in and you're back here to the auto configuration wizard, you're going to want this checkbox checked, estimate bit rate with bandwidth. So this will figure out how much data you can send to the streaming servers. So let's let that run and go ahead and hit next. Okay, so with your testing complete, you should recommend a server, your bit rate, and hopefully you'll have an output scale resolution, which is like what you want. 1080 with 30 FPS, I think is pretty decent. So let's go ahead and hit apply settings. So a couple other windows will pop up here, stream information where you can set information about the stream before you go live, such as the tags, the game you're going to be playing, and the title of your stream, and then stream chat, of course, if you want to interact with people in your chat room. So for right now, what we need to do, though, is to make sure that on the back end that Twitch TV is going to be showing everything just fine. So for right now, I'll close out these extra windows. We don't exactly need them. And then in the web browser, I want you to go to inspector.twitch.tv where we can basically troubleshoot any problems which might be happening between OBS and Twitch. So once again, you'll have to log in with Twitch. So click that, log in and authorize, and let's run a stream test. So now in OBS, what you need to do is to go up to OBS preferences, and then you're gonna be looking for stream and checking this enable bandwidth test mode. So do that, hit apply, and then let's hit okay and start streaming. So as you can see, this is going to allow you to test without going live, which is what we want to do first. So let's go ahead and hit yes to continue. And now we can come to the back end on this inspector.twitch.tv website. And let's go ahead and refresh and see if it's receiving the data. So we can see bitrate live, no delay, stable at basically the bitrate that we set up. So remember, my bitrate was 5950. So if we want to just double check and verify that the bitrate is correct, let's go to OBS preferences, then go down to output and you'll see your streaming bitrate here, 5,950 kilobits per second for me. And since we can see that we're stable at that amount here, we're pretty much good to go. So to actually start streaming for real now, you can hit stop streaming. Let's go back up to OBS preferences, stream, and just make sure enable bandwidth test mode is disabled here. And then before you hit start streaming, you probably want to be on the Twitch dashboard. So if you have multiple monitors, you can have your game on one monitor. And then on the other, you just have your Twitch dashboard. So here's where I'd recommend you be on the dashboard when you're running your stream. Dashboard.twitch.tv on the stream manager tab over here on the left. So here you'll be able to see your chat, the stream preview. Make sure that you have your stream preview muted while you're streaming. Otherwise, it would be kind of weird listening to yourself. 
unless you need to just double check that the audio is working. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You have other ways to like edit the stream info here, but pretty much you'd be good to go at that point. You just need to hit the start streaming button, which of course is right here. Now note, if you don't already know, you can actually record and stream at the same time. So if you want to store a copy of your stream onto your computer, you can just hit start recording before or after you hit start streaming. And then you can both stream to Twitch and record to your computer at the same time. So that's pretty much it for the basics for how you can take OBS and quickly set up a Twitch stream, making sure that you test everything that's working uh, before you go ahead and start streaming. So from this point, you just need to make sure that your audio and video sources for your scenes are set up properly and you should be good to go. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end and I will see all of you in my future video content.